we're in a place today, folks, we just have to be honest, and I am being honest. As someone who loves America, we're not in a good place right now, and we are going in a place that is descending into more darkness, and we need to be aware of this. We need to recognize what's going on and check it right now before it gets too much further down in there so that we can get the ship turned back in the right direction because if we go too far in this dark direction, the consequences could be enormous and possibly catastrophic for our nation. That is not an exaggeration. Now, I'm just about to get on a plane. I'm, I'm actually here in London. I'm, I'm about to get on a flight to head back to Washington, D.C. Uh, this is too important for me to wait. Uh, now, I, Gary showed me a, a clip here of the president just a couple of days ago, which I found really disturbing, frankly. And it was disturbing not so much just on the face value of it, which it was, and we'll get to it in just a second, but because it shows an, 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 a descending pattern that's going on among some of the elite of our country, among the, the, the names of our country, those who lead, our, our leaders at the highest levels. And, and this is something that I want to shine a light on to shatter, to shatter the darkness, if at all possible. So more people are aware of it because people see in context. And that's one of the things that I love about this channel is that we're able to show context here. Too many times in mainstream media, you get a soundbite without context. And people may be led to believe one thing when if they see things in context, they may say, oh, crap. That's what I'm hoping we get here is we get an oh, crap moment because we need to be aware of what's happening here. So let me back up a little bit, first of all. So just a couple of months back, there was when there were a lot of these protests started with uh, a, a lot of the people that were pro-Palestinian because they had seen so many tens of thousands of Palestinian people had been killed by the Israeli onslaught into the Gaza Strip as a result of the, 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 the tor horrible events of October 7th of last year, where Israel, again, had every right to go and defend itself. But it's always mattered how you go about doing it. That's going to be a key here. We're going to touch on it in, in depth later on in this segment here. But we just we need to understand that there is a right way and a wrong way, even to do things that are right. Now, Senator Tom Cotton, when there was a protest on, on the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, he actually had a problem with it. I thought we were about free speech and people have a difference of opinion, but some are saying, yeah, let's don't get free speech. And in fact, let's demonize anybody we don't like, as Tom Cotton said on this show. I agree with you that you have to get to these pro or these uh, criminals early. If something like this happened in Arkansas on a bridge there, let's just say I think there'd be a lot of very wet criminals that have been tossed overboard, not by law enforcement, but by the people who's uh, road they're blocking. If they glued their hands to a car or a, the pavement, well, probably pretty painful to have their skin ripped off. But I think that's what, the way we'd handle it in Arkansas. And I would encourage most people anywhere that get stuck behind criminals like this uh, who are trying to block traffic to take matters in their own hands. There's only usually a few of them, and there's a lot of people being inconvenienced. It's time to put an end to this nonsense. Yeah, inconvenience. If you're inconvenienced, yeah, throw them over the bridge. That, that's, that was shocking to me on its own. By itself, that was shocking. He is advocating violence against someone that he doesn't agree with. And because somebody was going to be inconvenienced, he's going to throw them off the bridge. What would he have said to Martin Luther King? How many of these protests that Martin Luther King did that inconvenienced a lot of people but was desperately needed for justice in our country and, to, and for people to expand or, or show their ability to have free speech to give exactly what they thought, even though it was directly contrary to conventional wisdom of the moment. Would he like to shut that down? I, I mean, this it, it, just goes beyond the pale. Unfortunately, that's just one. And that's why I'm, we're doing making this video here today, because there's a lot of things going on here. Now that we just jump forward a little bit, uh, and maybe even just a week or two ago, I can't remember the exact date right off the top, but uh, you had Lindsey Graham going on national television that's actually trying to defend Israel's conduct of its war. Now, as I told you, and I have many times, the way Israel's going about this is just flat wrong. It violates international law, it violates American law, and it violates just common decency about killing innocent people without even trying to be careful about it. Now, I'll point out that Israel claims they are, and you're gonna see that, an example of that in just a minute. But the reality is grossly out of character 
with what their claims are. You can use any words you want. I could care less what their words are. What I care everything about is what's happening on the ground, the reality on the ground. And that's the only thing that matters to me and to most American people, to most just decent humanity loving people. That's what matters is what's really going on. But apparently the folks in the senior levels of our government, like Lindsey Graham, he could care less about them. In fact, what you're about to see here is how he was talking basically that they don't even exist as humanity. Watch this. Why is it okay for America to not to, to drop two nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end their existential threat war? Why was it okay for us well, to do that? I, I thought it was okay to Israel do Senator, whatever you have to do to survive as a Jewish state. Senator, again, military officials say whatever the technology you have to do. has changed. But let me ask you about how yeah, all these of military this officials impact, that you're talking let me, about. Let me ask you are something. Full of crap. Of course, people are full of crap if they have a different opinion than you do. And of course, they're full of crap, as you say, if that means putting the brakes on Israel so they don't get to do whatever they want. And you could hear, you saw, the, I mean, his veins were popping out in his neck. His eyes were just like fiery red. He was lusting after the thought of killing hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of Palestinians because to him, they weren't even human beings. That's the part that that's you're starting to see now. This is the real danger here. You saw Senator Cotton talking about these people like they were just some kind of a nuisance that should be thrown off a bridge. Now you have Senator Lindsey Graham saying, yeah, because we killed a bunch of hundreds of thousands of people in Japan. Uh, Israel should be free to do the same because they don't even count. They're not even real people. Kill them all if you need to. That's the intent behind this. These are senior American government officials. These aren't just somebody on the street corner complaining. This isn't just somebody on YouTube or, or social media making crazy and outlandish statements. These are elected, highly ranked officials. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. In fact, it seems to always start at the top, and that's the case here. So I mentioned at the outset, this is what President Biden said just a couple days ago. There is no equivalence between Israel and Hamas. And it's clear Israel wants to all, do all it can to ensure civilian protection. But let me be clear, contrary to allegations against Israel made by the International Court of Justice, what's happening is not genocide. We reject that. We will always stand with Israel and, and the threats against its security. So here you have the president of the United States. Now, just full throated support for whatever Israel says. So you see him say, oh, despite what the International Criminal Court says, despite what these other nations who have done investigations, they're all wrong. There's nothing going on here, nothing to see. Even what your eyes tell you, the things that you see with your own eyes. Yeah, y'all all wrong. All these just myriad of clips. I mean, Gary's showing some right now, that, but there's been tons of others that we've shown. On nearly every one of these shows, it's just widespread, wanton destruction of the Palestinian area here. There is no effort to try to take care of people. And I know, and in fact, I'm gonna show in just a second ago where Netanyahu always claims the contrary, but I'm gonna expose how that's a bunch of crap as well. That genuinely is factually inaccurate to grotesque levels because of the, con uh, the consequence it has to human beings. I don't care what Senator Cotton, Senator Graham or President Biden think about Palestinian people the innocent Palestinian people are just as valuable as the innocent Israeli people that were slaughtered and murdered by the Hamas terrorists on October 7th. I hear a lot of people say, hey, this false equivalency. OK, I'll tell you what's not a false equivalency, that the, the Israeli civilians deserve peace and security. The Palestinian people equivalent deserve peace and security. There is an equivalence there and it's not false. It's just that right now one's not getting it. In fact, one's not even being treated as a human being. And that's just especially perverse to me because, you know, all this stuff about the Holocaust, the actual Holocaust, where the Jewish people were slaughtered in large numbers during World War II, the, as, as horrible as that was, they, they were unjustly accused and we were right in defending them. We were late in defending them, as, as history now shows us. And we're right in saying never again, because the Nazis treated the Jews like they were subhumans. 
We've all heard that. We all know how the history was. How can we now justify uh, uh, the next century treating another people group like they're subhuman or that they don't even count? And uh, my God, it's American people who are saying these things in some cases. Now, there's been lots of protests like the one we showed there. There's a lot of people growing, rising up, and they're, they're battling here. This is at least a fight, so I'm grateful for that. But, folks, we need to understand that we're going down a dark path, a path that's just uh, really horrific that has potentially catastrophic uh, consequences, both for the Palestinian people and for ourselves if it goes too far. And that's where we're at here. And so now I, I got one more here I'm going to show you. This is Lindsey Graham from, I think, a, a day or two ago where he's adding another layer because going into the situation to where the, the IJC has said that the, the U.S. Uh, it has some of our uh, our weapons have been used to, to help uh, Israel commit a genocide and that gen Israel is committing a genocide. Uh, Lindsey Graham says this on the Senate floor. We, hopefully, together will find a way to uh, rest our displeasure with the ICC because if they'll do this to Israel, we are next. This group tried to come after our soldiers. Yeah, you can clap all you want to. They tried to come after our soldiers in Afghanistan, but reason prevailed. So at the end of the day here, what I hope to happen is that we level sanctions against the ICC for this outrage to not only help our friends in Israel, but protect ourselves over time. So let's not look at the actual substance of the allegations. Let's not look at actually what's going on, i.e. like Gary was just showing you, your eyes. The things that you can see going on, even if you're not on the ground, the social media is covering this like no conflict ever before. Maybe only the Russia-Ukraine war has been covered with as much detail as this one's being covered. And you see that the place is just being wiped out here. And whose water is Lindsey Graham carrying? Is it the American people? Is it yours? Is it, is it the American taxpayer? Is he carrying your water? Is he doing something that's good for you? Or is he doing something that's good for the leader of another country who's made basically saying the same thing Lindsey Graham is. Check out Benjamin Netanyahu. This is outrageous. Uh, and many people across the political spectrum in the United States and leaders of democratic countries around the world have uh, called it exactly that. Israel has gone to lengths that no other government and no other army in modern urban warfare has gone to prevent civilian casualties. For us, every civilian casualty is a tragedy. For Hamas, every civilian casualty is a strategy. They're trying to keep them in harm's way while we're trying to get them out of harm's way with millions of leaflets, uh, uh, phone calls, uh, text messages, and so on, and l largely succeeded. But of course, not. it's not perfect. So this is what I talked to you about earlier. He's using words to say, man, we're really trying to take care of the civilian population. He's actually saying the most in the history, like nobody has ever tried to take care of the population better than we have. And what, what's our evidence? Because he said so, or because they put some leaflets out, or because they put text messages out, as though that's the answer, as though all you got to do is send out a text message and tell people go from this place to that place and, and it's going to be problem solved. Let me show you why that's a bunch of crap, too. Here, bring that map up there because this is from the northern part of Gaza early in this war. All the red there is the area of destruction of the Israeli IDF of the Palestinian areas. You tell me, you get a text message in the middle of that sea of red somewhere, where are you going to go? Where is there safe to go to? Most, Almost all of those areas are the built-up areas. They have been wiped out. And it's just the same way in the southern part. If I had that updated map, I could have brought that up there. It looks just the same. There's nowhere else to go. And, oh, by the way, that you know, kind of didn't mention that the, many of the times when they tell them to go places, those areas get bombed. It's, it's, there's plenty of reports out there. You don't have any problem. You can go find those things in there. So, you know, to people who want to support Israel and just want to turn a blind eye to everything and just say, because historically they have been, you know, perpetrated, They've been perpetrated against because the Holocaust did happen to them in World War II, that they would have turned a blind eye and now basically say you can do anything you want because of historical uh, things that were done bad to your people. No, you, you can't. You can't. Every situation stands on its own merits. What happened to the Jews in World War II was horrific and indefensible by any category. There's, there's no caveats to that. There's no asterisk. It was heinous. It was inhuman. Everything you've ever heard is right about what happened to them. 
you don't then get a pass to do the same things to another people group because it just doesn't work that way. Humanity can't function if you turn an entire people into nothingness. If you say you don't count, you don't exist, you can't do that if you want to be able to say we're standing on the right side. And there's a lot of shame in America because we took a long time to react to the Holocaust during World War II. A lot of criticism. You know, we knew things earlier on and didn't do a lot. America took a lot of heat at the time. Let's don't repeat that, folks. Let's don't do it the same thing again to where we turned a blind eye to, to a whole group of people who were being victimized. They're powerless. Look, again, what Hamas did, indefensible on October 7th. They deserve to be punished for what they did. But the whole 2.1 million people in Palestine and millions more in the West Bank do not deserve to be treated like cattle, like non-humans, and just treated any way they want and killed at large numbers. And cite a nuclear holocaust in Japan as justification to let Netanyahu do what he wants. You see, that actually exposes the reality that... that uh, that uh, 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 Lindsey Graham and many of these other people, they know that people are dying in large numbers. They're trying to tell you it's okay. Hey, we, we killed a bunch of J Japanese. We firebombed a bunch of people in Germany. So yeah, so why shouldn't Israel be able to do it? Don't worry about being discriminated. And that's, again, I want to go on to one other point that Netanyahu yeah, talked about, which I hear a lot. We're doing the best that we can to protect people and to, to you know, uh, the best in the military history take care of people. I've done it. Now, I could just tell you without showing you any clips, I've physically been trained in it. I have to train other peoples to do this kind of thing. I've fought in four combat deployments, everything from high-intensity tank-on-tank warfare to counterinsurgency stuff, military training. I've literally, I've, I've covered the whole gamut personally, what I've done. But let me show you something here from the, the Task and Purpose channel where they're talking about this. This is before this war even broke out, so this is not even related to this. This is just how America trains their people to do this kind of warfare. There's an interesting quote on urban warfare. A U.S. Army major in Vietnam said the following, it became necessary to destroy the town to save it, end quote. And that's kind of the paradox of urban warfare, isn't it? That you want to root the enemy out to potentially help the civilian population there, but in order to do that, you're going to destroy the place? The ROE, the rules of engagement, and philosophy of urban warfare have changed dramatically since then. We realized flattening a city might be counterproductive in the long run. The idea today is not to level cities. It might be more difficult on soldiers who are tasked with doing surgical room clearing, but it's also necessary to avoid making things worse for them in the grand scheme of things. And, and yeah, how many times have, have you heard me say that exact same thing on this channel? How many times have I said, look, it's harder on Israel. To do it right, it's harder. It takes more time. But in the end, you have a shot, at least, at having a successful outcome. Because what Benjamin Netanyahu right is not successful. He is harming his own people. Let me just point blank say, as bad as what we're doing is, as dark as some of the areas that we're heading as our senior leaders, it's also counterproductive for Israel. They're not going to succeed, folks. They want to bring peace to their people. They're not going to. They're bringing down more hatred and animosity than ever existed prior to 6 October. That is a shocking statement to say, but it is absolutely borne out by the facts on the ground. That's the reality here. Far from being anything against the Jewish people, I am for the Jewish people. I want them to have a shot at peace. This ain't it, folks. This ain't going to happen. This is going to do the opposite. It is going to make the hatred against the Israeli people through the roof much more than it was before. So whenever Netanyahu's out of power and probably in some villa someplace and sipping on, you know, some kind of drink and just taking it easy, all of his people are going to be paying the price for this for a long time from now. That's the reality of it. And that's why this is so perverse that not only is it bad for humanity, not only is this bad for America, it's even bad for the Israeli people. Of course, it's bad for the Palestinian people. Bottom line, it's bad for everybody. And this kind of stuff needs to stop quick. Now, fortunately, all the news isn't bad. Now, there are a lot of people that have been protesting around this. This covers the political spectrum. This covers the race, religion, and every other kind of spectrum that are recognizing the things we're talking about, and they're standing up for it. And they're starting to say some things. And, and even when they're protesting, they're being treated as badly as some of these people are, they still keep going. Bernie Sanders is a Jew. 
and he is one of the best and most articulate advocates for doing this the right way. Here's how he does. The reality is, as I think any objective observer knows, uh, Israel has broken international law. It has broken American law. Uh, and in my view, uh, Israel should not be receiving uh, another nickel in U.S. military aid. So, again, you can't call him an anti-Semite. You can't say, oh, he's been anti-Semitic. Oh, wait, he is a Semite. He is a Jew. That's right, because people, it, it's across the religion. People who are atheists are standing up against this because they see just intuitively it's irrational, it's immoral. Nobody should be made to suffer because of what some other people do. And this, let me just point out something else, because I hear this a lot, too, and it just really drives me crazy. When I hear people say, yeah, but the Palestinians voted for him. There aren't any innocent Palestinians. Really? You want to go down that path? You really want to go down that path? So if you voted for George Bush, so then the illegal operation that we did in Iraq is by invading you with a false premise of weapons of mass destruction. Is that your fault? Or if you didn't even vote for Bush, but you were an American, but the American people did, you're going to go down that path too. So you're going to blame everybody for that? Or everybody from any country, you see where that, that that's going to fall apart right away. You can't list it. It's, it's what the leaders do, which is today. Why I'm saying we need to check this slide into darkness because it can get a lot worse than this. And that was what Bernie said. Now, let me show you what some other people are doing about it, uh, saying. So you heard Netanyahu had that ridiculous statement a while ago uh, about how you know the world is standing behind us. Yeah. No, it's not. Let me show you what, uh, and I believe this might have even been just today, from Ireland, Finland, uh, uh, let's see, was it Ireland, um, uh, and uh, two other countries, uh, Norway and, and, and Spain. Other countries are standing up. They're doing the right things at the government level. Check this out. Today, Ireland, Norway, and Spain are announcing that we recognize the state of Palestine. Each of us will now undertake whatever national steps are necessary to give effect to that decision. In the lead up to today's announcement, I've spoken with a number of other leaders and counterparts, and I'm confident that further countries will join us in taking this important step in the coming weeks. This is an historic and important day for Ireland and for Palestine. On the 21st of January 1919, Ireland asked the world to recognise our right to be an independent state. Our message to the free nations of the world was a plea for international recognition of our independence, emphasizing our distinct national identity, our historical struggle, and our right to self-determination and justice. Today, we use the same language to support the recognition of Palestine as a state. 143 nations have recognized Palestine's state to exist. It used to be America's position a two-state solution we want them to be we're now standing uh there are only now nine countries around the world who are voting against this and uh, along with the united states who are our big stalwart allies standing right with this nation such as micronesia Nauru, palau yeah you see almost every other country on the planet is opposed to what's going on there and and we are isolating ourselves more and more you have Joe Biden who's frequently said, we've shown this clip several times, where he wants to be the leader of America. This is what we do. We lead the world. We, we set the pace for things. We lead out and, and tell other people where to go and how to take care of everything. And who's following us? Palau, Micronesia, and the rest of the world is over there. Folks, that ain't leadership. That's harming us now, not just morally. And you know, one other, so I'm going to show you one other source that, that agrees with what I'm saying here. Not quite in agreement with the with the president of the United States or these U.S. senators, it's the American own our own investigations. The State Department, Gary, put that that uh, put out there. This is uh, on the 10th of May. There was a, 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 a an investigation and a report which found the following. It is reasonable to assess that defense articles covered under the NSM 20, that's U.S. law, have been used by Israeli security forces since October 7th to improperly kill Palestinian civilians. And then we did yeah, double speak. At the same time, it's also important to emphasize that a country's overall commitment to international law is not necessarily disproven by violations of that law. So we want to you know, kind of speak out of the double side of our mouths at the same time. 
But you see that the truth is, and the reason why these things happen is to people who put these together, who know the truth, they, their conscience won't let them just give the fake stuff that Biden gave a few minutes ago and claiming that, oh, no, there's no evidence of that. When our own State Department says, yes, there is, and your own eyes tell you, that, yes, there is. That's where we are today, folks. We're going down this dark path here that's irrational, it's illogical, it doesn't even make sense, it doesn't help Israel, it doesn't help the United States. It's a terrible thing to do, and it's something we've got to get checked because, you see, that's how you stumble into ever darker kinds of activities. It's when you dehumanize an entire population, pretty soon you'll dehumanize part of your own population. And I assure you, if you think that can't happen, you are dead wrong. We've seen it many times. When the dark part of a human heart starts to take actions or control over the actions, many things become possible. And things that you would otherwise never imagine to happen can happen. That's already the case here. These things I've told you just five, six months ago, it would have been unimaginable for a U.S. government to be saying these kinds of things out loud. And yet they're not even getting a record. It's time to check this, folks. Don't be silent on this. Make your voice heard. We're doing everything we can here at Daniel Davis Deep Dive to make sure that the voice of reason gets heard. I need you to do the same thing. Whatever aspect you have, whatever influence that you have, whether it's a little bit or a huge amount, make your voice heard. If you don't want your country in your name to go darker and darker and dehumanize people, say something about it. Do whatever you can. We're going to continue to uh, bring you this information. We're going to continue to keep and hold people's feet to the fire. We're not going to let this go unchallenged. We're going to challenge it here. You can count us to keep doing that. Sorry, I got to shut up for here because I got to catch a plane. But I, I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll talk to you next time. I'll tell you later, Steve.